Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course not possible without the continued support of Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. If you own a sensational classic car such as this one, you would be crazy not to have it with Shannon's Insurance. They offer us just so much more as enthusiasts. In fact, if you add your home insurance to your current car or bike insurance, you will receive a 10% multi-policy discount. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call on 134646. You can also visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au. They have a comprehensive website and while you're there, why not sign up and become a member member of the Shannon's Club. And when it comes time to rebuild your classic American built GM or Ford, National Parts Depot is the place to go for your parts. They offer a three million part inventory and they will send you a catalogue pertaining to your particular type of build. Find out more when you visit National Parts Depot at npdlink.com. And if you've got an engine, well, you need Penrite Oil. What an incredible company, what a fantastic product. They've been around since 1926. They're Australian owned and they're a family run business. Penrite Oil also offer you a tech line where you can ring up, speak to a tech about the particular oil for your type of engine. Visit Penrite Oil at penriteoil.com.au. Penrite, simply a better class of oil. And on today's show on the back end of Detroit, I thought I'd return back to Carlisle, Pennsylvania to bring you the 2013 Corvettes at Carlisle. This is the 32nd edition of Corvettes at Carlisle, the biggest Corvette show in the world. On March 25th, 2004, the world lost an incredibly special person, Chip Miller. Chip was known worldwide for his amazing positive attitude and of course his unsurpassed passion for Corvettes. Chip also had an amazing Corvette collection. It was with this passion and his commitment to the people that the largest Corvette event was created, Corvettes at Carlisle. The first generation Corvette was introduced late in 1953 and America's love affair with their very own styled sports car began. It was originally designed as a show car for the 1953 Motorama display at the New York Auto Show. When it was released, it generated enough interest to induce General Motors to make a production version to sell to the public. To keep costs down, GM executive Robert F. McLean mandated off-the-shelf mechanical components and used the chassis and suspension from the 1952 Chevy sedan. The drivetrain and passenger compartment were moved rearward to achieve a 53-47 front-to-rear weight distribution. It rode on a 102-inch wheelbase. The engine was the same inline six that powered all other Chevrolet models but featured a higher compression ratio, three Carter side draft carburetors and a more aggressive cam to suck the air in up front and blow it through quicker out back. Output was 150 horsepower, which was no slouch for a road car back in 1953. Back then, there was no manual transmission available to Chevrolet rated to handle 150 horsepower, so the two-speed power guide automatic was used. From the line, 0 to 60 miles per hour was achieved in 11.5 seconds, and to keep tooling costs down, the body was made out of fiberglass instead of steel. 300 hand-built Polo white Corvette convertibles were produced for the year of 1953. So time now to go and speak to some people that have the Corvette disease pretty bad. 2013 Corvettes at Carlisle, how good is it? Welcome to the show, Ralph. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Flitch, it's nice to have met you. Thank you very much. You've got a glorious 62. You want to tell us about the car? Uh, it's a 62, uh, 327, 340 horse car. Uh, in 62, they made uh, 250 horse, 300 horse, 340, and 365 fuel injected. Uh, 340 is solid lifter car. Uh, I bought it from the original owner, who is a friend of mine. I got the original bill of sale with the car uh, from a Chevy dealer that's still in business just around the corner from my house. Uh, the original salesman is the owner of that Chevy dealer, and he still remembers selling the car. 
Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's an amazing story. Uh, the fellow I bought it from, uh, uh, elderly gentleman, had a stroke. He couldn't drive the car anymore, and he wanted the car to go to someone who was going to keep it in the condition that he had it. And uh, as you can see, uh, I try to keep it as nice as I can. Ralph, you're doing a good job. I mean, I love the, the, the cars that are laced with history here in the United States. There's so many stories like this where you can trace back who were the original owners, where the car was sold, what dealership, what town. That's amazing. Yes, it is. Uh, Back uh, in my neighborhood around Buffalo, New York, uh, we have several cars and uh, all, the fr all the friends that you make uh, as you go to different car shows yeah. tell you all these wonderful stories yeah. and uh, I can tell you stories over and over about how guys found cars and how they've restored them. They may, might have been their dad's car or whatever, yeah. but the history behind the car is just as important as the car. Good on you, Ralph. Pleasure talking to you. Thanks for being on today's show. Thanks for having me. Now, if you're wondering which year Corvette relates to which C-Series, here is a quick guide for you. The C1 Corvette ran 1953 through 1962, C2 ran 63 through 67, C3 ran 1968 through 1982, C4 ran 84 through to 1996, C5 ran 1997 through 2004, C6 started in 2005 till current, and the C7 will commence from 2014. Time now for a glorious 1957 Corvette. How are you, Alan? Good. I'm fine, Fletch. Thank you. That's good. You'd have to be good on a day like this, wouldn't you? Oh, it's a beautiful day. Beautiful yeah. weather here. We've got a, a very nice 283 up front, two four-barrel carbs. Gee, there's something about that. That looks so cool. Yeah, it's one of the things that attracted me about the car and why, why I wanted to buy it is that you could actually purchase a car and an engine with that setup right from the factory. And that's a very uh, one, wonderful thing. When all the hot rodders were customizing their Ford 31, ones, uh, yeah. Chevrolet put this out and it had the dual, qu dual quads right on the engine. Well, Alan, tell us about your particular car. How long have you had it? I've had this car about um, nine years, and uh, when I bought the car, I bought it because of the design of it. I, I like the look of the car and the, uh, what do you say, the coves and all of the the, uh, the grill and so forth. Yep. And um, when I purchased the car, it needed a lot of work. I rebuilt the front end, I rebuilt the transmission, and I actually was the one that put the dual quads back on the car. They, <laughs> they weren't on it. Somebody had already taken them off. That's awesome. It's good to see traditional styling, too, carrying on through from 1953 from the first Corvette when you look around the dashboard I mean it's just so classy um, I love the curvature around the dials it's quite opulent even on the passenger side there with that uh, well, the supposed uh, speaker vent there and the the chrome and the the emblem of for Chevrolet I mean just attention to detail they they just didn't stop did they no they didn't and it's sort of an art deco kind of style in 1957 they carried it right through and you know there was a lot of forethought in each each and every model year that's what I should have just said, Art Deco, it could have saved me that big long sentence that I said. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, but look, I love it. I mean, the two-tone's nice too. I like the colour scheme. Now, was it always painted that way or did you do that? No, this this car was painted this way when I purchased it. And from all of the underpinings that I find, find when I'm working on the car, I believe this was the original colour. Good on you. Alan, great talking to you, mate. I love your car. Mate. Absolutely awesome. Thanks for being on today's show. It's good to catch up with you guys. Fletch, thank you so much. I hope to meet up with you again at Corvettes at Carlisle. Thank you. How, how good are we, Lance, eh? So good. This hey. is great. Hey, life, life is good, right? Life can't get any better. Look at the sky. There's not a cloud in it. <laughs> Co-owner of Carlisle Events, Lance Miller. You've done it again, buddy. Corvettes, I know this is your gig. This is my gig. I love this stuff. Just look at the cars rolling in behind us. I mean, it, and everybody's smiling. That's what it's about. What's numbers like this year, Lance? We're around the 3,000, I believe? We are. We're darn close. Uh, it's really, really, really strong. I mean, look at it. The new Stingrays coming out. Everybody's excited. The hype's on. So I'm loving life. This is great. Mate, look, honestly, we turn up here at Carlisle Events. It's like a city in here. I mean, it's huge. We've got the area, the main area here, the midfield. It's full. We look ahead of us up on the hill. It's full. Uh, cars are coming from all over the United States of America. It's just phenomenal. All over the United States of America. Look right over here. We got Canada. I talked to a bunch of Australians. Kiwis nonetheless. These, are, the, these Aussies, I don't know. What's going on there? We're getting more Aussies coming to Carlisle. I love it. I just <laughs> talked to a big group, no lie, just a few yeah. minutes ago. And I, I'll tell you what, the enthusiasm is just over the top. They want to bring the cars over, have a good time. Yep. So that's what it's about. Well, it's only going to get better from this point. All right, Lance, I want to talk about Chip for a sec. Your dad, the founder of Carlisle Events. Uh, tell us about the foundation and drop the website for people that would like to contribute to such a wonderful fund. 
That's easy. My dad unfortunately passed away in 2004 from a very rare disease called amyloidosis. So what we did was start a foundation called the Chip Miller Charitable Foundation. We figured, you know what, he made a hell of a footprint here, so why not continue it? And we decided Chip Miller Charitable Foundation was the way to go. So we started it. Chipmiller.org is the website. I encourage everybody to check it out, support it, get the word out, pass it around to your friends, and uh, certainly get to know amyloidosis. It's a terrible, terrible disease and took my best friend's life. He's one guy I wished I got to meet. Hey, he was the best. I really did. I wish you had the pleasure to meet him because, honestly, you guys would get together and have a blast. It's a funny thing, talking to this guy here and being here at Carlisle events, I think he's still here with us. He is. He's definitely looking down. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Right. Great to catch up with you, Lance. Hey, it's all, always a pleasure, my friend. Hey, thanks for coming. We appreciate all the support. Thanks for having me back. Life is good, as you said. That's it. In 1953, 300 Corvettes were sold. 1979 was the biggest sales year at 53,000, and a total of 1.3 million Corvettes have been built to date. Moving through, we have Linda now with a very nice 2003 Corvette. Now, although not a classic, it's nice to hear through the eyes of a lady, what are you thinking of the event so far this year, Linda? It's, uh, it's fun as always. This is our eighth year here with uh, the, the show and my husband has this car and I have this one yeah. so we come together so it, it's always fun it's always a lot of fun it's just amazing we we spoke to Lance earlier how many cars have turned up and now from various parts of the globe I mean the Corvette show here at Carlisle the biggest in the world attracting cars from all over the place it's just so good isn't it yes it is so tell us what's your passion with Corvette how far do you go back personally well my father was an auto mechanic and I grew up in the garage with dad, you know, under the hood. So, and then um, it kind of went from there. Always, always had GM cars. Never dreamed that I'd have a Corvette. And now we have two. Well, there you go. You've, you've got it bad, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we're going to have a third one, too, with the new C7. They kind of breed, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Linda, really good catching up with you. Thank you so much. Three big days here at Carlisle with Corvettes. Thanks so much for your time. Great chatting with you. Thank you, Fletch. I hope you're really enjoying the 2013 Corvettes at Carlisle and you're watching it first on Classic Restos. Thanks to Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and the fantastic people at Penrite Oil. Back with more in just a moment. We've got Bob from Canada. He's driven all the way from Canada. It's not too far, but it's far enough, right? Yeah, it's about an eight-hour drive for yeah. us. Yeah. And you did it in the 1960 vet. That's correct. Yep. How did it go? Very good. Yeah. This year. Yep, no problems. T tell us about the car, Bob. How long have you had it? I bought the car in 1977, so it was only 17 years old then, but uh, now it's 53 years old. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a part of you. You'll never get rid of it. That's correct. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it forever, probably. Tell us uh, what sort of running gears have got there, Bob. Uh, it's, uh, it's 283, uh, four-barrel carb, four-speed. So yeah. it's, uh, it purrs along pretty good. Yeah, It's a neat ride. I bet you're glad you got the Corvette when you did. I bet you you know, would rather that than having to turn around now and buy one. Oh, for sure, yeah. This car has gone up in value quite a bit. <laughs> In yeah. the 37 years, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. Um, it's good to see you guys from Canada as well. Good to see you flying the flags, and uh, yeah, as, as Lance mentioned earlier, there's a lot of people from around the world coming in now to this event. Oh, for sure, yeah. But uh, this group here, we've been coming down for at least 10 years now, yeah. and it seems like there's more and more every year. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of an event for us. You guys would be waiting for it, wouldn't you? Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. It's it's uh, you know, a thing for the summer for yeah. us. Yeah. Yep. It's a pinnacle event, certainly, when it comes to Corvettes. Bob, thanks very much for your time. Great to catch up. Love the car. It's, uh, before I let you go, it is very original. Very, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Almost all original, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it good to see a car from late 50s, early 60s? Here we are in 2013, and we see them in original condition. I just think that's extra special. Oh, for sure. That's, I think the original cars are the, are the nicest ones. Yeah. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. All right, thanks, Bob. Very good. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Fletch. Thank you. Moving through Corvettes at Carlisle, it's great to find unique people and very unique cars. Now, when it comes to a high mileage car, you wouldn't think for 10 seconds that it would be a Corvette Stingray. Well, this car features this year the 2013 Corvettes at Carlisle. The owner is Steve, 507,000 miles on the clock. How are you, Steve? I'm doing well, thank you. That's good. You must do a lot of driving. I do a lot of driving and uh, uh, seeing the countryside and, and, and having fun in my Corvette. 
Yeah. Now, the car in itself obviously has had a restoration a while ago. We've uh, painted it last in 2002. Uh, it was broken the front four times, and so you take care of it, get back on the road as best you can, and, and drive it. There's a lot to be said for simplicity as well. I mean, you can't go wrong. 350 Chev. 350 Chevys. Originally, it was a 327. Ran at 180,000 miles. This this engine right now and since 2007 has 104,000 miles on it. Sounds like you might be running some oil there from my major sponsor. Yeah, I should get some of that pen right. <laughs> yeah, um, I really appreciate the fact too that you sent me an email uh, yeah. all the way down to Australia. So uh, I really appreciate that, Steve. Yeah, it was uh, when I was researching this event, I saw your your uh, videos on their, their uh, website. <laughs> and uh, thought that uh, maybe I uh, should send you an email and have you stop by for a visit. What the heck? Well, you can watch Classic Restos on YouTube at Classic Restos TV. And uh, you see good guys like this, Steve. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Look after this Corvette. You should see him. He's here on the main stage here. He's in, uh, well, I guess the main arena. And uh, it's so rightly deserved. Good on you, Steve. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Hi there, Fletch. My name's John Kane. I'm the chairman of the Delaware Valley chapter of NCRS. And uh, NCRS is a national organization. Well, it's actually an international organization now. Uh, but uh, it's, we have 40 to 45 chapters approximately 45 chapters at, 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 the, at the current time throughout the United States and the world. And uh, we have uh, about 16,000 total members. We have a ch chapter in, in, uh, in Netherlands, in Europe. We have uh, a, chapter, a very active chapter in Australia yep. and a very new chapter in New Zealand. But we're, 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 all, we're spreading throughout the world. But we have over 40 chapters within the U.S. John, that's awesome. Well, well, tell us, what do you guys stand for? Well, we, we National Corvette Restoration Restorers Society, and we, we restore, it's, it's to preserve and restore, by, preserve by restoring, uh, uh, older Corvettes. So John, uh, people that have got a Corvette can get in touch with you guys. Have you guys got ledgers of like engine numbers and chassis numbers and the, the, to, to find the history of the vehicles, that type of thing? Absolutely. We, we actually, we, uh, NCRS is primarily a publication. Uh, we have a lot of activities where members come and attend conventions and things, but of those 15, 16, 17,000 members that we have at any given time. It's primarily a publications organization. We put out eight magazines a year, uh, quarterly, and uh, four of the magazines basically uh, tell you how to restore and preserve your Corvette, uh, how to make it look original, what was original, what was not. And the other four are buy and sell of both cars, parts. This is awesome. This is what we need, the restoring fraternity to have access to people such as John uh, and the committee and uh, just for that information. It's just so valuable, isn't it? Well, we're preserving it for posterity because, you know, one day we're all not going to be here. And when that and, and the people who lived and, and loved these cars, uh, we're, gonna, we're reducing what we we're, we're making it so that uh, it's a process so future generations can enjoy them as much as we did. Good on you, John. Thank you for your time. Uh, very sure. interesting guy. Thank you. Nice to talk to you, Fletch. You. Another thing that Carlisle Events is well known for is their ability to host many private and retail traders. In fact, if you're into parts, this is a swapper's paradise. What is it with parts? Even if you don't need anything, it's hard to resist walking through the endless parts on sale. At Carlisle Events, there is literally many miles of walking if you choose to around these sites. And it doesn't matter what you're after this weekend, if you own a Corvette, you'll find it here. If you're really enjoying Classic Restos, well the DVD boxed sets are available at classicrestos.com.au along with other Classic Restos merchandise as well. Whilst you're there, don't forget to check out the major sponsors and as to how they can help you. I hope you're really enjoying the 2013 Corvettes at Carlisle. Back with more after this. A little bit of day two here, 2013 Corvettes at Carlisle. You know, there is just something about a Corvette and the American lifestyle. And Building T here at Carlisle Events will always show you some of the country's finest.
there's nothing like an early start. And as the dew sits on these magnificent Corvettes, this is the Car Corral section. And these cars are awaiting new homes. Okay, on the show now, time for an amazing lady. Diane, welcome. Hey, how you doing, Fletch? I'm wonderfully well. Now, very clever lady, this one, because uh, you're a licensed bus mechanic, right? I'm a school bus mechanic and transportation supervisor, yes. Let me just say this. Diane does work that a lot of guys couldn't do, and myself included. She can do wheel bearings. She can rebuild gearboxes, transmissions. I mean, the list goes on. Now, you've got two Corvettes here. You've got a 60 and a 61. Give us a quick rundown on the 60. A quick rundown on the 60. Well, we got it. Uh, it was a barn find, 27 years it was in a barn. Uh, the front end was frozen solid in a block of ice. Uh, we brought it home, we tore it down, every nut and bolt right off the frame, and my husband and I build everything ourselves right from scratch. Uh, nobody else lays a finger on them. We share the motors. My husband does the frame and suspension. I do the bodywork and interior, and then he paints them. That's just awesome. So um, Russ can say to you, Diane, go and rip the gearbox out of that and rebuild it, and you could do it, right? He doesn't tell me to do it. I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> She's even got the initiative to know when it needs to be rebuilt. That's fantastic. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. Diane, we move on to the 61. What's the deal there? Uh, the 61, well, again, that was an inspiration, and we took it right off the 60. Uh, once we had the 60 done, we took a look at the 61, and we wanted to flip-flop everything. So if you take a look at them, everything is flipped on the car. Uh, the white with blue, blue with white, the coves, the license plates, the numbers, everything is a, is a match to the 60. How do they both drive as cars? Well, the white one that my husband drives was built strictly for comfort, and the blue one was built strictly for power, and she's my baby. Ah, <laughs> uh, see. You don't want comfort, do you, Diane? No, I don't. I like power, and, and I drive her, and we drive the cars everywhere. We don't believe in trailers. Yeah. Uh, we drive them everywhere we go. You haven't said one thing yet that I disagree with. I think that's awesome. Um, speaking of which, how far have you travelled and where are you from? Uh, we're from northern New York, up around the Thousand Islands region, and we travelled over 400 miles to get here. And we do back roads because that's the way the roads, yeah. the cars were meant to be driven. They're nice and twisty and turny and full of hills, yeah. so you can really pound the gears and uh, crank that wheel. There's no fun out on the interstate. No, it isn't. No. Diane, wonderful catching up with us and sharing both of your magnificent Corvettes and to think that you do them yourselves is extra special. Thank you. Thank you, Fletch. It's been wonderful talking to you. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed just some of the 2013 Corvettes at Carlisle, where it really is about the cars, the people and the excitement. Don't forget that ClassicRestos.com.au is the website for the DVD boxed sets of your favourite TV show, along with other Classic Restos merchandise as well. And while you're there, check out my major sponsors and as to how they can help you. They're wonderful people to deal with and they're waiting to hear from you. As I say at the end of every episode, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, signing off from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au
Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil.